Okay, in this video, we are going to go through some examples of balancing equations. If you have already watched my other video on balancing equations, going into the background and the process, uh, you'll want to pull out your notes at this point. If you haven't already watched that, I'd suggest going and watching that to take some notes and uh, have that list of the process steps. The first equation that we're going to work on balancing is one for the decomposition of water and this is something that I've done in my classroom. We have something called a Hoffman apparatus and we run some electrical current through some water and what happens is we break down the water into its component elements of hydrogen and oxygen. And so if we take a look at our pro process, as we're first learning how to balance equations, we'll do this. And as you get comfortable with this, or if you already are comfortable with it, you don't really have to do this step. It's kind of an optional step. But I recommend for a lot of my students when they're first learning how to do this, is we draw a box around each individual substance that's in the reaction. Notice I didn't, I didn't put a box around uh, the H2 and around the O in the water molecule because the water is one substance, so it gets its own box there. And the purpose of that box is to say that we are not going to change anything inside those, those boxes in order to get this to balance. The only thing we're going to do is put coefficients, the big numbers, in front of each of those boxes to tell us how many molecules um, of each substance we have in order to get this to balance. Because if we take a look at this one, we could, we could be tempted to get this to balance by adding a subscript of 2 to that H2O, because then we'd say H2O2, and we have two hydrogens on each side and two oxygens on each side, um, but we would not be describing the same reaction. We'd be describing the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, not the decomposition of water. So we don't want to change what's inside those boxes. Our next step is to draw a vertical line underneath the arrow because the arrow is our dividing line uh, between the before and after. We've got our reactants over on the left hand side of the arrow. That's all of our substances or substance that we have before the reaction. Over on the right hand side we have our substances, the products, and those are the things we have after the reaction takes place. So this, this vertical line separates the before and after. Our next step is to list the individual elements that are present in this equation. Right now we just have hydrogen and oxygen. And now we want to start with an element that shows up in the fewest number of compounds. Now in this case it turns out that they're, they, both the hydrogen and oxygen show up uh, twice. Because the hydrogen shows up in the water, it shows up in the hydrogen gas. The oxygen shows up in the water molecule, it shows up in the oxygen gas. So it doesn't really matter which one we start with. Um, read left to right, we'll start with the hydrogen because it's over on the left hand side. So now we take our atom inventory and right now we look and we say well we've got a water molecule. Right now we've, we've just got one water molecule because we, we have not put a coefficient in front there so we're assuming that's a one. And so we've got one molecule that contains two hydrogen atoms and so we're representing two hydrogen atoms. Over on the right hand side we've got our hydrogen molecule, our H2 molecule. Again, because there's no coefficient written, we're assuming there's one. And so that one molecule contains two hydrogen atoms. It also has two hydrogen atoms. We say, okay, that's good. We, we started out with two hydrogen atoms. We ended up with two hydrogen atoms. We didn't create any. We didn't destroy any. We're fine. So now we go and we go to our next element and say, We've got water that contains one oxygen atom, and there's only one water molecule, so we're representing just one oxygen uh, atom. And over on the right-hand side, uh, we're representing two because we've got this, this oxygen molecule that contains uh, two atoms, and now we have a problem with the law of conservation of mass because that said we don't destroy atoms, don't create any, and right now it looks like we've created one. So we've got to change the coefficients now to get the oxygen to balance. And since we need to end up with two, it would probably be a good idea to start out with two. And the way to do that is if we started out with two water molecules, since each water molecule contains one oxygen, the two times the one, that, well, that'll, give us, that'll give us two oxygen atoms to start with. And so now our oxygen is balanced. But whenever we change a coefficient, we need to go and check, see, did, did we mess up something that we've already balanced? And we look and say, yeah, we, we've changed the, the hydrogen here because now we've got, now that we have two water molecules, 
they each contain two hydrogen, now we're representing four hydrogen atoms before this reaction takes place. And afterwards, we're only representing two. And so, well, that's pretty easy to fix because uh, if we put a two in front of our hydrogen here, that would represent that we've got two hydrogen molecules. And since each one of those hydrogens contains two hydrogen atoms, that's representing four there. And now we check and we say, well, we, we're representing four hydrogen atoms before and after, two oxygen atoms before and after. Now it's balanced. And we can check to see do we have lowest whole number ratio of our coefficients. And sometimes it's handy to kind of to pull out just the coefficients and write them. And we would say, well, we have three different substances here, so we're going to have three different coefficients. And our coefficients are two, two, and well, what's our third coefficient here? We don't have anything written in front of the O2, but in chemistry, uh, many times if we don't bother to write the number, we're assuming it's a one. So we'd say for this, for this skeleton equation that we started out with of H2O2 going to H2O2 and, o and O2, uh, we ended up with a set of coefficients of two, two, and one. So at this point, let's do another example. And this time, we're going to do an example of the reaction of aluminum with hydrochloric acid. And this reaction produces aluminum chloride, AlCl3, and it produces hydrogen gas. At this point, again, if you're already comfortable in saying uh, we're not going to change any subscripts, we're not going to stick a coefficient in the middle of something, like we're not going to put a coefficient in the, in the middle of the HCl, we're only going to put a coefficient in front of it if, if we need a coefficient there. If you're comfortable with that, you don't have to do this next step. But as you're learning, um, not a bad idea to put a little box around each one, just as that reminder to say, don't change anything inside the box, just put a number in front of it. Our next step is our vertical line. Then we list out our elements. Aluminum, hydrogen, and chlorine. Now we take a look and say, well, let's see, how many places does aluminum show up? Well, it shows up as an element. It shows up in the aluminum chloride twice. Hydrogen shows up in the, in the HCl and it shows up in the hydrogen gas, shows up twice. Chlorine shows up in the HCl and the aluminum chloride twice. Well, again, it doesn't really matter which one we start. None of the three show up any fewer places than anything else. So we'll start out with the aluminum. And right now we're just showing one aluminum atom. So we've got one there. And in our aluminum chloride, there's just one aluminum atom. So we're balanced for the aluminum. Now we take a look at the hydrogen. And we say we've got one hydrogen atom represented in the HCl. Over here on the, on the product side, we're showing two hydrogen atoms in the H2. So we can immediately fix that. And we will fix that by putting a coefficient of two in front of the HCl. And of course, that changes the number of hydrogen atoms from one to two. Now, have we changed the number of aluminum atoms with that coefficient? You say, nope, we haven't done anything to aluminum, that's still okay. So now we have to take a look at the chlorine. And now that we have two HCLs, that HCL contained one, it contained one hydrogen, it also contained one chlorine. By putting a two in front, says we've got two molecules of HCL now, and so now we've got two chlorine atoms represented. And as we've written AlCl3, that formula unit of AlCl3 contains three chlorines. And now we say, oh, we've got a little bit of a problem because, again, we've, it looks like we've created a, a chlorine atom. And now we have one of those two and three type things. And, you know, in chemistry, if you have uh, two and three, you're usually going to have three of the two and two of the three. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a two in front here because we know we're going to have to change that coefficient. And now that number of chlorine atoms changes from three. Now we've got twice as many. We've got six because we've got two formula units and they contain three each. 
Uh, now to get the surveillance, we've got to come up with we've got to come up with six uh, chlorines on our reactant side. And in order to do that, we're going to have to change this coefficient from a two. A two doesn't work anymore. We need to put a six in front there. By putting a six in front, because each of the HCLs just has one chlorine in it. So to get six of them, we're going to need six molecules. And now we've got our chlorine to balance. Uh, have we upset our hydrogen at all? We say, yeah, we had this balance before, and we had two before. Now we've got six. So the hydrogen changes again. And since the HCl contains one hydrogen, and we just put a coefficient of six, that changes to six. So now we don't have enough hydrogen in our on our product side. So we're going to have to get three pairs because the hydrogen molecule, uh, the, the atoms, the hydrogen atoms, and a hydrogen molecule come in pairs. So we're going to have to change that to say that we've got uh, three pairs of hydrogen. And the three times two gives us six hydrogen atoms. And so now we fix our chlorine and we fix our hydrogen. Have we upset our aluminum? And they say, yeah, we did that too. When we put the two in front of the aluminum chloride, we did change the aluminum to two. So now can we fix that? Oh, fortunately, our aluminum's all by itself over here. So we can just put a two in front of the aluminum and we don't mess up anything else. And so that changes our number of aluminum atoms to two. And now we take a look and say, okay, we had two aluminum atoms before and after. We have six hydrogen atoms before and after. And we have six chlorine atoms before and after. Well, on an individual basis, we're all, we're all balanced. Let's check our coefficients here. Let's, let's write them out and say we've got four different substances in this reaction. We'll kind of write them up here and say we've got a coefficient of two and six and two and three. So we say those are the coefficients for this reaction. And when we look at that, say, could we get that into any lower whole number ratio? And we say, well, no, because the, the two, you could divide that by two, but then you're going to have uh, one and a half once you divide the three by two. So yeah, that's the lowest whole number ratio we can have. That's our answer for, for this equation. And I'm going to do one more example because in my video on the background in the process, we talked about situations where you had everything balanced except for one uh, of the elements that's in the reaction in its elemental form. And we said, if you get it all balanced except for that one, and that one isn't quite working out, um, you can use fractions on a temporary basis. You can't have your final answer with fractions, but if you can get it to balance by using a fraction, then what you do is you multiply all your coefficients in the end to get them to a nice whole number ratio. So this time, we're going to, just, we're going to have a skeleton equation here for butane. Butane is C4H10. So I'll just write that up so you know it. What I'm talking about here is butane. And this reaction describes the burning of butane, the combustion of butane. And combustion is combining with oxygen gas. And we are producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. Those are the products of combustion. Now this time, um, I'm going to say, oh, you should be getting pretty com comfortable. They say we're not going to be putting any uh, uh, coefficients in the middle of a compound. We're not going to change any subscripts. So this time, I'm going to skip that first optional step about writing the boxes in between. But I'm still going to draw my vertical line because I think that helps quite a bit. And now we're going to list out our elements. We've got, of course, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now we look this time, we say, is there, are there any elements that, that show up in fewer places than other elements? And we say, well, the carbon shows up in the butane, the carbon shows up in the carbon dioxide, it shows up twice. The hydrogen shows up in the butane, it shows up in the water, it shows up twice. Oxygen shows up in the oxygen gas, it also shows up in the carbon dioxide, it also shows up in the water. So it shows up three places, we definitely are going to leave the oxygen to the end to get it to, to, to try to balance this. If you try to start with the oxygen, you just have too many choices on, on what to do to get it to balance. So it's better to leave that till the end. So we'll take it from the top here and say, okay, let's take a look at the carbon. And we look and say, well, 
right off the bat, we've got four carbon atoms represented in that one molecule of butane. On the right-hand side, we've got one molecule of carbon dioxide showing right now. It contains just one carbon atom, so we only have one carbon atom showing up here. Well, but very quickly, we say oh, we can fix that because if we have four carbon dioxide molecules, we'll get our four atoms of carbon, and then we'll be balanced for carbon. Now we look at our hydrogen, and we say in the butane, uh, one molecule of butane, butane contains 10 uh, hydrogen atoms. Over here, our water molecule, there's two hydrogen atoms each. And so we need to come up with, with 10, because right now we're showing two. We know we need more than that. If they come two to a package and we need 10 of them, well, we're going to need five packages of water. We're going to need five molecules of water. And the five times the two will tell us that we've got 10 hydrogen uh, atoms there. We look at our O2. Right now we're showing just one molecule of O2, and it contains two atoms. Now it starts to get a little trickier here on our product side, because as we look at it, we've got oxygen showing up in a couple of different places, so we've got to be careful here. The carbon dioxide, that contains two, one molecule of carbon dioxide contains two atoms. And we're showing right now four molecules of carbon dioxide. And so we say the four times the two, well, that gives us eight oxygens. But do we have any more oxygen over here on the product side? You know, yeah, we do. It's the, the rest of the oxygen is over there in the water molecules. And so in that water molecule, one water molecule contains uh, just one oxygen atom. We're showing five water molecules here. So the five times the one gives us another five. And so now we have a total of 13 oxygen atoms on our product side. Now we look and say to get this to balance, we need 13 atoms on our reactant side, but they come in pairs. And then with pairs, if we try to get a whole number of pairs, um, we can't come up with 13 because if we put a 6 up there in front of the O2, we're going to have 12 oxygen atoms. If we put a 7 up there in front of the O2, we're going to have 14 atoms. And so we're kind of stuck on the whole number deal. But this is where temporarily, to help make everything work out, we could put some kind of a fraction up there. Now the reason why we'd want to do that is right now, if we go and change the coefficients in the carbon dioxide, or we go and change the coefficient on the water, we're going to mess up our carbon or our hydrogen. Then we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to change our butane and everything's going to be kind of scrambled up again and it's almost like we're starting from scratch. So this way, since we've got it down to the only thing that's unbalanced is the oxygen, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a fraction here. And since 6 isn't quite enough and 7 is too much, well, we really need, what, what we really need to get 13 is we need 6 whole pairs and another half a pair because a half a pair will give us the one. So if we put a six and a half here, six and a half times two will then give us our 13 oxygen atoms that we need. And now our equation is balanced. That's the good news. It's all balanced now. We've got four uh, carbon atoms before and after. We have 10 hydrogen atoms before and after. And now we've got 13 oxygen atoms before and after. That's the good news. The bad news is we need whole number ratios. But we just got done doing empirical formulas and we say, well, we got if we've got the ratio all figured out and we've got something in the half, well, we're just gonna multiply all of our coefficients by two and that will get us to the, to the correct whole number ratio here. So if we just multiply everything by two, there's an, un, there's an understood one in front of that butane molecule because right now we've got one butane. Well, if we double that one, course, we're going to put a 2 there. If we double the 6.5, we're going to get 13. And of course, the rest is easy. And now we can look and say, well, let's, I'm going to write my coefficients over here and say I've got coefficients of 2, 13, 8, and 10 here for this reaction. We've got four different substances, four different uh, coefficients. And we're definitely in the lowest whole number ratio because that 13, of course, can't be divided by 2 because that's why we multiplied everything in the first place.